Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Sam Kwok, one of the Kwok Brothers, real estate investor, and welcome to our podcast, episode 14, all about real estate investing. And today's episode, we're going to talk about why real estate investing is better than stocks. Now, of course, I can argue for both sides. You know, my mentor told me, Sam, don't get into an argument or a debate where you can't argue against your own position. So that being said, I can definitely argue against real estate investing and why, you know, I can give you the reasons why stocks are better than uh, than real estate investing. But I think my core position, my personal preference is real estate investing. And yes, I am biased. I can tell you that at least. But I can give you some reasons why uh, I think real estate investing is definitely better than stock markets and different perspectives and angles. Uh, and perhaps I might, I might suggest that, you know, you discover uh, the possibility that real estate, inv- it, real estate investing is better than stock, uh, stock investing. Uh, and a lot of the ideas I'm going to talk about today is going to be borrowed from uh, someone that I follow a lot and someone that, that I definitely admire, and that's Garrett Gunderson. Uh, you can Google him. Uh, he's been on CNBC, Wall Street Journal, Forbes, you know, you name it, right? Uh, I think he's a foremost financial expert that uh, I can quote. And a lot of times, I definitely cite him for uh, his, his thought leadership. So, uh, Number one reason that I believe that real estate investing is better than stocks is the ability for the cash flow end of it. Now, uh, you can, one can also easily argue that with stocks, there's dividends that get paid out. Uh, there are certain rare stocks that do pay monthly dividend. But I always also argue back that, you know, is, is it enough to cover your living expenses? Or matter of fact, how cash heavy is your investment? So a lot of times, um, you know, being able to borrow money to buy stocks uh, is limited. Now, people can argue back saying, well, you can always buy things on margin. You can, there's a margin call. Um, but at the same time, looking at the risk assessment of things, I would almost argue back saying real estate is definitely less risky when it comes to uh, the lending profile, right? Um, if I was to lend on something, I would definitely lend on a, an actual property, right? I'm sitting on a house where right, uh, I can borrow money, money on. Uh, this is tangible. It's a tangible asset. So uh, as a, if I was the bank, if I was a bank, the bank president, I would much rather lend on a tangible asset than, um, you know, stock certificates, right? So that's just my position. And again, there's, there's ways to argue against that. Uh, and I'm not going to go into that too much for the purpose of this podcast. But um, going back to my original point, cash flow is, I think, is the, the, the leading advantage as far as why real estate investing is, is better. Um, if you have enough properties, let's say 10 paid off properties, you know, not leveraged, completely free and clear, you know, I think with the rent that you're going to be able to collect from those 10 properties, you're going to have a pretty good, you know, sizable amount of income every month coming in to sustain your living. Whereas if you, let's say, bought $100,000 worth of stocks, I don't know if it's really feasible for you to live on the dividend, you know, which most dividends get paid out quarterly or sometimes even, even uh, bi-yearly or yearly. So it may not be feasible to collect dividends and live off of that, right? And at the, at the same time with Stock markets, and I guess this is my point number two, with stocks, you have to buy, buy for one for one, meaning whatever the price is for, let's say, Microsoft stock for that day, that's what you can buy for, buy for, right? You can't negotiate with the stockbroker and saying, well, you know, I know it's, it's on the market for $51 and it's trading right now for $51, but how about $48, right? I mean, it's, it's just not going to happen, right? A lot of times, um, you know, you can't negotiate the price unless, you know, you have a special offering, um, but that's not going to happen. But with real estate, you can always negotiate saying, you know, I know this, this property is $100,000, but how about I pay you cash for $90,000 or $89,000, dollars um, You know, that's very likely to happen. Um, so I, I do appreciate the fact that in real estate investing, yes, you can get discounts. Um, you, you don't necessarily buy for one for one. You can always get a discounted price for real estate, but also you get the cash flow end of it, right? You buy something for, let's say, $100,000 and you can generate a potential cash flow of $500, $600 a month. Uh, and a matter of fact, but real estate, you can put 20% down or 10% down. Or if you're like me, you know, negotiating for owner financing, you can do no money down or 5% down uh, and collect cash flow out of the real estate investing. So I, I think in generally, uh, you know, for those people who are still stuck with the stock market, you know, you're, you're for the stock market. And there's nothing wrong with that, by the way. If you're, if you're 
if you see the, the, the benefits of stock market more than real estate, chances are you might, be, you might have this mentality or mindset of accumulation, right? Meaning you got to accumulate as much as money as possible for retirement, right? Your retirement strategy might be, well, let's get up to a million dollars in my 401k or IRA, and then I'm going to, you know, cash out, right? I'm going to start collecting uh, the payout on the, the 401k, which is not a, it's just not a bad strategy, but you're only limited to how much money you can cash out out of the, the accumulation of, let's say, a million dollars, right? Once that million dollar dries up, that's gone. No more. No more income, right? But with real estate, right, as long as you're buying and holding the safe, sound strategy of buying uh, a piece of property, then yeah, you're going to, as long as you have a tenant in that property, you're going to be able to collect cash flow for the remainder of the property's life cycle, right? Now, also with real estate, you can also do what's called forced appreciation. Now, forced appreciation, and what I mean by that, and some of you are going to get this, is that you can take a property, uh, add some features like granite countertop, nice cabinets, good flooring, right? Vinyl or hardwood flooring. And the value of the property is going to go up significantly. Now, the sphere of influence that, that you have when it comes to, to real estate is much larger than uh, stocks. Now, of course, in stock market and stock trading, uh, if you know a secret information or you happen to work for the company that you bought stocks in and you buy a piece of stock because of some knowledge that you acquired that the general public doesn't know, that's called insider trading and trading. And, you know, you can get in trouble for that and it is illegal. So with, with this amount of sphere of influence you have with stocks, it's very limited somewhat, right? You can't, like, let's say you bought a uh, hundred shares of Microsoft stocks. You can't show up to the Microsoft headquarters being a you know, shareholder and say, oh, now that I'm a shareholder, you know, I'm going to fire you. I'm going to fire you. And also I'm going to add the door over there and uh, spray paint, paint the door a different color. No, you can't do that, right? Uh, you would end up actually, you know, probably getting arrested for trespassing or even, uh, you know, damaging companies, uh, um, property. So there's not much you can do to increase or force increase Microsoft's worth. You know, the, the, the way that you're going to get your appreciation is by, you know, some sort of a, an outside market, um, you know, market force or, you know, the company announced that they're going to release some sort of new technology or the company is much more profitable, but you have nothing to do with the fact that Microsoft is profitable, right? You don't work for Microsoft. You know, you're not a C-suite you know, Microsoft executive, right? You can't make the decision. You can't, call, you know, make the calls as far as how the company is going to go, right? So the, 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 the only thing you can really do is track down, you know, this company, the company's uh, the track records. You can only kind of predict on what the company is going to do based on what decisions they have made. But with real estate, right, you can call the shots on, okay, I want that paint color. I want this granite countertop. Uh, we're going to add this door there or we're going to move this wall, right? Things that you can do to, to effectively change the characteristics of the property, which also changes the price and the value of the property based on what the market's doing. So there's a lot of sphere of control. There's a lot of control mechanisms with real estate that you can do to force appreciate the value of the property, thus creating the profit margin and selling it. Now, that's one end of real estate investing, right? You can fix and flip the property. But I think my, you know, for those who've been following me and Daniel for quite some time, you guys already know that we love to buy and hold and just, you know, collect cash flow. Right now, uh, Daniel and I uh, currently have uh, control over 76 units, right? In which all of those, the units are in our LLCs and our S Corps and such forth. Um, Combined, I did the math in terms of the cash flow. We're pretty close on to you know about one hundred sixty, hundred seventy thousand dollars worth of gross cash flow every year. So uh, we've been able to invest in those those real estate deals actually without using any of our own cash or credit. Uh, in fact, uh, the only cash we invested in any of the deal is twenty five hundred dollars, and that was on a ninety thousand dollar property. But other than that, outside of the twenty five hundred dollar down payment we made, uh, we pretty much had no cash or credit involved in the 76 units uh, of the deal that we've done. A lot of the deals we've done primarily came from uh, not using our own money, but using someone else's money and using other people's credit, right? With, you know, if you try to orchestrate the same kind of deal with stocks, it's very hard. It's very rare that I see people doing that. Uh, but with real estate, however, 
Uh, the perceived risk is lo- much less, in my opinion. Uh, and the ability to partner up with someone, right, and to, to, to have some creativity. And again, coming back to sphere influence is much greater than I think the stock market. Now, of course, the stocks, you know, the, the, the ability to, the, the barrier of entry is much lower, I think, you know, with stocks. But I think with real estate investing, same thing could be said if you know the knowledge, if you know the people, if you know what you're doing, right? If you have a set of, if you have a set of skill, like uh, what Daniel and I have been able to accumulate in the last couple of years, being able to negotiate for owner financing, right? Being able to negotiate 10% or, or lower, right? Or less of down payment, uh, being able to raise capital. So the bar- barrier of entry really depends on your knowledge. And I think that's the beautiful thing about any sort of investing, whether it's stock, um, Bitcoin, right? Cryptocurrency, uh, real estate investing. But I think uh, to me, real estate investing is more of a logical choice from the standpoint that everyone needs to live in a house or an apartment, right? Real estate will forever be here, will, has been here, and it's still here. As long as people are making babies, which I think is still happening, um, people are going to need to find a place to live, right? And my, my fundamental argument to this is at the end of the day, right, if you're broke, if you have no money at all, would you be worried about buying a stock or would you be worrying about where you live in, right? Uh, chances are you, you said where to live in. So fundamentally, every one of us, 7.2 billion people in the world need a place to live, right? Doesn't, I don't even care if you're a nomad. You still need a shelter, right? You know, physiologically, you need a place to sleep, right? Um, so my, my fundamental argument is at the end of the day, there will always be demand for real estate investing, um, you know, for real estate in general. Uh, and people can say, well, stock markets has been appreciating 12% average versus 8% appreciation. Again, going back, it's not about the forced appreciation and, and it's not about the accumulation. It's about the cash flow, right? If you can sustain a monthly income from your rents that you're collecting, I think you're going to have a very successful uh, business. And this is why I believe uh, even Warren Buffett invested in real estate, Donald Trump, obviously, and a lot of successful uh, investors uh, have real estate in their portfolio, whether they're investing in, you know, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, cryptocurrency. Uh, again, you know, that's, that this is one of the reasons why I love real estate investing, being able to leverage, uh, cash flow end of it, the force appreciation that you can take on, uh, not to mention that, you know, there's going to be a demand forever, right? Even if North Korea nukes, I don't know, here in Chicago and pretty much Chicago is flattened, we still need to build, uh, you know, uh, houses and apartments so that people can live, you know, safely. They're, they're, you know, even if we go back to the medieval times, even if we go back to Stone Age, living in caves, well, heck, I'm going to buy a ton of caves and rent it out. And that's what I'm going to be doing. So those are my top reasons why I believe real estate investing is so much better than stock markets. And if you diversify, you know, that's cool. Uh, even for me, I don't actually believe in much of diversification, but um, I, I, at the end of the day, I believe in uh, investing in one, you know, bag, or I should say, uh, one uh, basket of eggs. Right? A lot of people tell tell you, "Hey, make sure you don't want to put you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket." For me, I think it's more about put all your eggs in the basket and ensure the crap out of it, and know what you're doing in that basket. Right? Um, I would rather much be a master of one particular investing strategy and be really good at it and make a lot of money versus, you know, kind of knowing everything, you know, a little bit of everything uh, and not making so much money out of it, right? That's just my thing. And I think Bruce Lee once said, and I'm quoting Bruce Lee, he said, I do not fear a man who practices a thousand kicks one times. I fear a man who practices a thousand times one kick. So one kick thousand times, right? But should have done it the other way around. So that's pretty much my reasons why I believe real estate investing is better than the stock market. Uh, And just to reiterate, you know, you got the cash flow, right? You get to collect rent every month, which if you have enough properties, it it can sustain your living. Number two, the ability to leverage and the the risk assessment of being uh, to to lend on real estate is much lower, right? Uh, Number three is the forced appreciation, right? And being able to uh, have that sphere of influence, whereas if in stock, Training. If you know of a secret information that the general public doesn't know, it's deemed usually illegal. So, those are one of the the reasons why I love real estate investing, being able to build wealth and income at the same time. Whereas 
in stocks, you know, you're building wealth, you're building equity, but there's very, very limited amount of things you can do to create income out of stocks unless you're trading, you know, day trading every day. But again, day trading takes time in rental business. Uh, you know, you usually have the tenants pay for rent. And the only thing that you're really doing is managing your property manager. If you're using a property manager, that is, um, so it's, you know, those are the re reasons why I stick with real estate investing. I've done stock trading. I've done mutual funds. I've done bonds. I've done cryptocurrencies too. Uh, and at the end of the day, I, there's nothing that I believe would trump real estate investing at the end of the day. So that's pretty much it, folks. Uh, those are the reasons why I believe real estate investing is going to be a stronger game than stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. And uh, that's pretty much it. So guys, thank you so much. I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, next week, we're going to come back. Hopefully, we'll get Daniel back. Uh, both Daniel and I are super busy. We're traveling a ton. Uh, you know, even right now, I'm 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 sacrificing uh, my lunch break to do this so that you guys can get pertinent information, relevant information about real estate investing, guys. So thank you so much. Tune in. Be, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click like on this video. And if you have any other questions, guys, go ahead and comment down below. Uh, I will see you guys around. All right, take care.